Welcome back, everybody, to the From the Bench podcast. As always, I'm your host, Eric, and I'm with my co-host, Trevor. What's going on? And uh, we're back for another week, and it's going to be, you know, getting back to the swing of things. We actually had uh, a sporting event that went on this past weekend, which we're going to talk about. So, uh, so, so jealous of Eric. Um, uh, Eric Trevor forgets remembered this event, and Trevor, Trevor being me, I uh, totally forgot, because he's a loser like that sometimes. That, that'll that happen with Trevor. Uh, very absent-minded ah. sometimes. <laughs> but, so yeah, we're going to talk about that. Trevor, turn your uh, your notifications off. <laughs> all, I hear is rookie, ding, eh? all I hear is ding, ding, ding. That's my phone, I'm sorry. It's all good. Um, Who am I kidding? I have no friends. Oh, burn! Uh, burn is right. So, yeah, so we're going to talk about uh, the UFC event, the UFC 249 that came up. We're going to get into a little bit of NFL. We're going to talk about uh, the NFL schedule release, kind of what that means for both the Patriots and what it means for my Chargers. And we're going to move on from there. Another sports season got canceled today, unfortunately, for a lot of these guys, you know, a lot of everyone wants to play to the end. Everyone wants to try for the championship. It's why you played for the first, you know, three quarters of the year. And it's a shame that they kind of had the season canceled on them. So we'll talk about that. And then, it's heartbreaking, really. Heartbreaking. Yeah. It really is. And then the NHL, uh, they don't really know what they're doing yet. They haven't really said a whole lot. They're try- kind of playing this by ear. And yet, it's really hard with a lot of these sports, um, you know, with – they kind of have to try to figure a way to do it where all these sports are, are you know, city-based models. It's so hard, right? Like we mentioned last week, the PLL, um, which actually there was quite a few people that liked lacrosse by through hashtags and stuff that kind of actually end up listening to the podcast or checking out and saying hi. Um, but, you know, they have that, they're a smaller, you know, league. They only have seven teams. And, you know, they can just do get everybody in one spot and do it. It's just not the case when it comes to hockey or basketball or football. Like there's just there's so many teams, and what do you do? Do you play in front of in, in empty arenas? Maybe right. So they're still trying to figure that out. But it's what they're, they it's what they're of, leaning towards. I, you know, like, that's surprising though. Like I'm even thinking next year, a little bit bigger. Um, we've probably not seen the end of this, so I wouldn't be surprised if some of that went on next year as well. It's like you said, it's very interesting. It's yeah. uh, it's mind bottling too. Yeah, so with the NHL, though, they kind of – one of the things they're spitballing around is the chance of a 24-team playoff system. So we're going to get into that a little bit, kind of just talk about, you know, what they proposed um, or one of the proposals. Like I said, I'm sure there is a ton of different things that they have, you know, planned and that they've talked about, you know, through all this, right? So, But For the sure. first thing I said, what we're going to – I mentioned at the top of the show – is the UFC 249, it was there. You know, I guess I say it's the first sport, but and it really is the actual sport. But the WWE did have um, an event too, which is fine. Like I said, the WWE, and I, a big uh, podcaster, Bill Simmons, he, he's a big wrestling guy, but he's also, you know, he likes fighting, likes boxing and everything else. And he kind of said, it's amazing how much better the UFC works with no fans as compared to a WWE because the WWE, the way that they have it set up, it's all about the fans and the fans reactions and involving they the thrive crowd. off the fans too. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's what it is. Right. And to see an empty arena, it's a little weirder where with the UFC, they have this, you know, octagon and then they have the lights shining down and you can't see anything else. Yeah. You see like a big, like the big reactions or the guys coming out and they're high five in the fans. Um, one guy actually, he when he came out, he pretended to like high five the fans <laughs> as he was coming out. That's it was, awesome. It was I pretty good. It. Well, it's just like, if if that's what you're used to, right? Then maybe just keeping in the swing of things. So, but uh, it was a big card, and a lot of people weren't sure how it was going to work. One guy actually uh, tested positive a couple of days before for the coronavirus, so they had to pull him off the card. Um, not great, but it is what it is. And like I said, this kind of works out because you can get all these guys in one spot. So they were in uh, Florida to do all this. And just wanted to touch on a couple of fights. I know Trevor's seen a couple of highlights. But the first one is probably the scariest guy in the UFC right now. And that is Francis Naganu. He goes out there and you know his, his opponent comes out. 
and he challenges him. He says after his last win, he says, "Know what? I I think I'm really good." It was um, Rosenstruck. Uh, he was ten and zero, hadn't lost yet. He said, "I want. I'm doing so good. I want Francis Naganu, and I I'm gonna I'm gonna show him. I'm you know I'm gonna I'm gonna put him out." And that was a lie because Francis Naganu came out and they were swinging hard. And these are heavyweights, like these are big boys, both both over two sixty. Call and Francis Naganu, Francis Naganu. Well, he's not the champ, but he is like one probably one of the scariest guys. And he landed a wicked left going forward, caught him right on the chin, dropped him out, and then Buddy falls back and like kind of takes a seat against the cage. And Buddy hit him with another, like, three or four good, like, left-rights, like, just dummied him. And it was in 20 seconds. So... He was already that, out. He was already out. Um, oh, he so, was out. It was sure. it was so, so nasty. And then, so from that, you also had uh, the Cowboy Cerrone, you know, one of the most popular fighters. The guy tries to, like, fight, I think, like, 12 times a year if he could. He, you know, he's just making bank. And he's one of the most biggest names in the UFC. He went against Anthony Pettis and you know, old show, showtime and cowboy kind of it went the decision so you didn't finish him so it's it, you know they always say never leave it, it up a, to the hands was, of the judges it was a war it was a war yeah and it was actually a pretty good fight and a lot of people kind of thought uh eh, you know cowboy i think he's gonna get this you know i think he should kind of walk away with it and even when they said pettis's name pettis even kind of seemed surprised like what what do you mean so, you know, it was, but it was a good fight. Uh, another, you know, entertaining fight. They kind of went back and forth, and they're good buddies. Apparently, Pettis beat Cowboy, you know, a couple years back, and they became, they got a really good friendship after that. It, that's what a lot of these fights are. You know, of some respect. of them are bad blood. Some of them are just like, I hate you, and I want to beat your head in. Um, some of them are, you know, guys that just understand, like, look, this is, it is what it is. Um, you know, I enjoy, you know, fighting. You know, it's it's an art. And <laughs> I want. I, uh, uh, I kind of like Cowboy. It. It's, it's disappointing he lost, but uh, like it's like you said, it seems like he fights every like second oh, UFC yeah. or every third UFC. Uh, you know what I mean? Like he fights a lot, like you said. So good for him, though. You know, make bank while you can, like you just said, and uh, because you don't know, like somebody knocks you out the wrong way or you fall the wrong way or something like that. There's your career. Or, you know how it is in sports in general. Or, so you know, good for him. Like making that, what that cheddar, that cheddar, so, the cheddar cheese, even right? He so did not win. So no, like well, I said, he's still getting, still getting, you know, money at the end of the day, right? Still getting paid exactly. for that fight. So which is good. Past that, uh, you had another one, kind of another controversial one. There's a couple other fights that I'm not going to mention just because I didn't really, you know. Oh no, you don't have to. You don't have to. You don't have to. I'm not doing the whole card here. We're not a UFC podcast. I'm just kind of highlighting a couple things. Uh, Dominic Cruz, you know, former guy, comes off of a three-year layoff. He's fighting the champ, uh, Triple C, uh, Cejudo, and with two seconds, well, with ten seconds left, say, Buddy hits him with with a mean hit and drops him. You know, Dominic Cruz starts stumbling back. He falls down, and Buddy jumps all over him. Um, he He's trying to finish him. And the guy wasn't going – like, it's one of those things in fights. And I guess Dominic Cruz said before the fight, he said, I asked the referee, like, you know, let me go. Like, until I'm, like, unconscious on the mat, you know, don't stop the fight for any reason. Like, if I'm still moving, don't stop the fight. And it was, like, so late in the second round. And Buddy was throwing the punches, but – Cruz was kind of getting up as it was happening and the ref called the fight with like two seconds left in the second round. <laughs> it was, it was a tough one. You, a lot of people kind of thought, you know, it's uh, you know, early stoppage. Some people were saying, well, yeah, but he got so hit premature, with, premature stuff. Yeah. And he, he got hit probably with nine or 10, you know, unanswered shots. I think Joe Rogan said 11, but there was a couple of those that missed. So it's just unfortunate. But um, another one, like I said, it's still a good fight. It was still a good fight up until that point. And then the big one was the t- was the interim uh, title fight. So this was between Tony Ferguson and Justin Gatli- um, Gaethje. So this was like, it was supposed to be Ferguson versus Habib before this. And then Habib apparently had his, he wasn't allowed to leave Russia 
because of all the COVID-19 stuff is what they're saying. So Justin Gaethje steps in on like short notice and says, yeah, I'll, I'll, I don't care. I'll fight you. I'll fight anybody. He's just a, you know, big boy from, from, I think he's from Arizona, strong, really powerful striker. And he goes in and it's a five round championship bout and Justin Gaethje just dummies him. Like picks him apart from leg kicks to just some absolute, I like, you got to give it to Tony Ferguson because the guy's somehow stood up it was eventually stopped with like you know i think it's like a minute left or whatever it was but he took some absolute bombs and it just like it was getting to the point that he's hitting him and you're just like you're almost doing the like the the wind thing like that oh god like that like like, that 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 hurts you're like oh my god just go down but yeah he uh, he stood he stood right in there for the whole thing so So, um, like a whole can of whoop ass like he, he you know took it off the jaw and everything else Oh, love man, it. it was, love the toughness. You can't. It was. Can't it was deny. good, but I kind of enjoyed this. Toughness, though. Yeah, yeah. You can't deny it. Like it's just. Like I said just took bomb after bomb after bomb, and Justin Gaethje actually went before it, and he was like just pushing and pushing, and pushing, and trying to finish the fight. And apparently, in other fights, he is he's really pushed it and tried to finish guys. He actually got finished himself by trying to like overwork himself and kind of put himself in bad positions. Vulnerable, vulnerable and this, positions, yeah. Oh man. Open and this one, he up. just, he just stood in there and just took his time and just beat him bit by bit by bit by bit. So he's and, smarter about it. Yeah. And like his coach even came out and said like, don't get beat. And he got hit. He was trying to finish him. Just kind of got a little loose at the end. I think of the second round and Tony Ferguson hit him with a monster uppercut, like just, rocked his world and he was lucky it was at the very end of the of the round or he, you know maybe tony gets on him and finishes him type of thing but yeah he didn't look back past that and it was it was a good fight but you'll enjoy this trevor so he gets they go and dana white goes and puts the interim you know belt on him you know he's not the the real champ he's just kind of holding it for habib through all this stuff blah blah and as soon as you know joe rogan goes out to interview him and he takes the belt and he chucks it He's like, that doesn't mean anything to me. I want the real one. And I thought it was so good. That's a competitor like, right there. That's and that's what it is. He understands. Like, yeah, okay, it's nice to have a belt. And it's, you know, I'll never forget it, I'm sure. And he'll always remember that night. But, you know, he went and he just understood that there's a there's a bigger bigger belt on the line that you want to eventually get to. And The real know, one, boy. Yeah, and that's it, right? So... Uh, another cr- crazy thing about this, so I checked because like this guy's gonna blow up. So, and I caught it like, probably a little bit after, a couple maybe an hour after the fight had ended. But Justin Gaethje, when I checked on Instagram, it had been Sunday morning, like it was late, late Saturday night, and he had at that point in time, he had four hundred and seventy-one thousand followers. That's a lot of followers. He now, since, so it's only been two days, he now has 686,000 followers. So he gained over 200,000 followers just like that over two days. That's unreal. So, you know, that's just going to help that guy so much more, you know, when it comes to branding, from sponsorships, from endorsement deals, everything else. So, you know, he really, they said like, look, you know, this is your chance. Don't, don't, you know, miss it. And he uh, he made sure he Don't didn't. Don't frack so. it up, boy. Don't yeah, exactly. frack it up. But like I said, it was just nice. Like I said, it's just to see if to see some kind of sporting event that wasn't an old sporting event, right? You know, and we've had the NFL draft. Something was, fresh, something new. Yeah. Yeah, like I said, the NFL draft is nice because we obviously love the draft and we love the build up and everything else. But it's it's still not as good as an actual sporting event. You know, at the end of the day, as much as NASCAR, we might like, like it, you said, is coming too, which is NASCAR exciting. is coming. I think the golf's coming, right? So there's all these things that are coming, um, which is going to be nice to see. You know, in the future, just give us something, right? Just you know, you can only watch so many, uh, so many games from 2003 and 19, you know, 97, and all this other stuff before you're like, okay, the Summit need, Series, Against yeah, Canada, like yeah. yeah, it's just one of those things. Um, So we're going to move on to football. You know, that's obviously a big topic for us. It's always going to be a big topic for us. Literally, we're both, we didn't plan this. I swear we didn't. You know, I'm wearing my Chargers hat. Trevor's wearing his Patriots hat. Um, But yeah, so we're going to get into that. And we're going to get the NFL schedules. But first, I wanted to, this is, I'm kind of throwing a 
a curveball at Trevor here. Sweet. I want to talk about a free agent that is rumored to our teams and get your opinion on it. So for the Patriots, we all know Tom Brady left. And we all know you, got, you brought in Brian Hoyer. The, what a beauty. The, the 20-time Patriot, it feels like. It feels like he's almost there every second season. So at least his third time, I'd say. At least. Yeah, and then you had, you had Jared Stidham, who, you know, I understand a lot of people are, you know, singing praises about the guy, and he's been compared You're to the Tommy. Man, Jared. You're the man. He's everything, you know, taken in the fourth round last year, you know, had, you know, missed out on some opportunities throughout college and everything else. Shout but out there's to another Oliver. name that some people are talking about, and that's Cam Newton. And so Trevor, dirty, I know. Dirty, dirty, dirty. You just did I know Trevor. I was going to say, I know Can't Trevor's not a big it. fan of him. I know he's not a big fan of him. And and I'm not a huge Cam, a Cam fan either. I, I understand he's he's a good quarterback, though. And at any I time, him. I respect him. When he's healthy and when he's playing like he can, he's a top 10 quarterback, right? It's You can say whatever you want. Like, we make, we, you know, between you and I, make all the jokes about how he overthrows all of his receivers by. You know, at least five yard for ten yard or five yard check down, he misses them by a mile. Yeah, it's just <laughs> and maybe that was it. Maybe that was injuries, right? Maybe, maybe that's what it was. But I just want to know what your opinion is. If you know, what if the Patriots were to say, you know what, we were actually this whole time, you know, we made it seem like we we're after Jared Stidham, but really we were after Cam Newton. And hey, guess what? We signed him. Well, uh, I'll chime in there then. So. Hypothetically, like Eric says, you bring in, and I'm not a Cam Newton fan, but uh, I do respect him. Like, you, he did go to a Super Bowl with Carolina. Uh, you got to have talent to get there. And, you know, with Cam, like, as far as I'm concerned, uh, I don't know what Eric's opinion is, but he can chime in after I give my little rant here. But I always found Cam never had uh, the best supporting cast. Like, for a while there, he had uh, Steve Sr., and let me tell you, he's a beauty, um, consistently good. Here's a guy who would have had crazy numbers at receiver if he would have consistently a pretty good quarterback, like a Tommy or a Drew Brees or, you know, just a consistent passer or Peyton Manning, like his brother, Eli. Just somebody consistent. His numbers would have been so much better, and he's got Hall of Fame numbers as it is, and he's an explosive receiver. One of those guys who can take a five-year pass and boop. Uh, he did not get it, eventually get Olsen, or he did get Olsen. I think he's had Olsen this whole time there. Olsen is now gone as well, but Olsen was one of the better tight ends, especially when he was younger. He's uh, he's still pretty productive, but he's been slowed by injuries. So, and he's always had, a, I guess, like they had Stewart and uh, Williams. I really liked Williams. I can't think of Williams' first name, but uh, he's a uh, speedster. D'Angelo. Yeah, D'Angelo, yeah. He was, uh, he was a really good running back, uh, very underrated. And there's a guy, actually, when he actually got shipped out of Carolina, he should have got a lot more opportunities than what he did, like – he still had lots of juice in the tank. I don't. Sometimes the running backs, you kind of feel bad. But anyway, so with Cammy, I think New England wins more games. Um, I hate to say that, but uh, maybe I'll chime I, that down a little bit. What, but I think he'd be successful in New England. Um, God, I think with Cam Newton, you you gotta win, win at least ten games because uh, if you think about it. New England won eleven games in Matt Castle. Uh, Your Tommy tore his knee up playing Kansas City. So you know, like. I don't mind him, but well, he's, he's not got, your favorite. They, they, he, well, exactly, but like New England, I think New England this year is going to concentrate on a big. They're going to be able to run the ball. New England's got one of the best backfields in the league. Um, not maybe a stud stud back like Sonny Michelle. He's never been a home run breaker like he was in college, but he's you know like I had mentioned in the last podcast or one of the previous podcasts. He uh, Sonny Michelle like he got his knee scoped last year. Um, so a lot of people were saying his, his run average was a little bit down and our line wasn't as good last year, but he was missing uh, noticeably like the burst. Like he wasn't slow by any chance, but for running back, um, you know, it's that second gear and that burst. I, I don't know how to describe it, but um, he's missing it. He was missing it a little bit. He was still productive, still good. And uh, they, we drafted last year, we drafted uh, Harris from uh, Bama. And he never even maybe dressed in one game, but never – yeah, I think he did for sure. But he got only a couple carries in that game he dressed. And he was pretty much put on, like, basically redshirted the whole year. 
So people don't really talk about him, but he's going to be really good, I think. He runs hard. I really enjoy his style. He was really good in Bama. Uh, he was there with a couple other guys. He shared carries, but that's all right. And we also got Burkhead. Uh, is it Burkhead? The white boy? Uh, I think it's yeah. Burkhead. Anyways, it's Burkhead. he can do it both. He can receive, he's a good, he can catch it out of the backfield. Uh, Sony kind of struggled the last two years catching the ball. He's a little inconsistent that way. He'll catch it all the time one game. The next game, he'll drop three or four. So, you know, we got our stud receiver back, as everybody knows, is White. Uh, James White, he's probably the best of the league at it. If not, top, he's got to be top three. Um, yeah, so I think I really, you guys are I obviously going to. Uh, like Eric and me watched the draft. They they made a really legitimate, they drafted two tight ends, which I really like. And one guy's kind of like an H-back. So if you watch New England before, uh, before Hernandez went to jail for killing that poor, poor bugger, um, he, uh, he used to line up at, at the fullback position and not just the tight end. He actually li lined up as a tailback as well. So I'm yeah. kind of excited about that. Uh, just maybe we see some wrinkles like that. So if you're Stinham, you're Cam Newton and you're going on a play action, boot or whatever, like just simple five yard or seven yard, you know what I mean? Fade air, just boop. Just well, I think, I think, in there I think that's just, part of the thing. I think that's so, part of the thing with you look at, you know, Tom Brady, Bill Belichick hasn't been able to do any of the Double and I understand it's Josh Daniels. Not the last that, couple years, anyways. Yeah, I think I understand it's McDaniel's that uh, you know does all the play calling and everything else. But it's the system that that Bill wants him to play, right? I, I'm pretty sure everyone kind of agrees on that. And you know, obviously Tom is Tom Brady. He's not a mobile quarterback. He, you know, he's a stand in the pocket. He can move it. You know, he's got good footwork and he's got good pocket presence and everything else. But he doesn't offer you that. You know, and he's and Tom is underrated when it comes to the play action and all that stuff. But he doesn't he, offer you that. He mobility. doesn't. He doesn't get the speed like you're yeah. suggesting. But like you just said, though, Tom is good at the head fakes and you know sometimes he's the head he fakes and he's got the he's good at hiding the ball. You know, for the handoff yeah. and and everything else. But you know, you look at someone like Cam Newton and what the wrinkle that could give the Patriots. I wouldn't want to play a Patriots team led by Tom Brady. Like Cam that, well, yeah, people don't oh, yeah, with, don't with think too like. New England, like, yeah, they lost Tom Tom Brady. Um, we've got we got some talented receivers. We still got Edelman, which is huge because we need that slot receiver, especially with a new. Let's say it's Stenham or even Cam. Um, that's your bread and butter. And we just like I just just said, we just added a couple more tight ends. I really like uh, Lacrosse. Showed me some last year. Um, trying yeah. to, I can't remember the first guy we drafted, but from UCLA, but um, Osiod or something like that. Yeah. Anyways, he could. Like, and it, all, a lot of his tape where he's successful, he was shredding teams in college up the seam. New England's been missing that since Bronk. And even uh, the last year Bronk played for us, probably the last six games, Bronk couldn't do that. Like, I don't know if his back was hanging him up. I think there was multiple injuries there with Bronk that year. But uh, if you can pass – when New England, let's, like, let's be honest here, probably the last five years have thrived in the middle of the field, their offense. Um, well, Tom – and that's been Tom's bread butter forever, right? And, well, exactly. But, that, but, but that's yeah, always been Tom's that. thing, right? Tom's one of them. That's why a lot of people didn't know that if Moss, and obviously it worked out well for Tom those couple of years when you had Moss. But you look at you you know, all the, fa Walker, all the though, famous, right? so. yeah, you look at all the famous Tom Brady drives. For the most part, a lot of them are all, you know, quick little slants to Edelman or Amendola, Welker, you know, all these guys over the years. Little dump quick offs to James White, or, you know, you go through the list of. You know, uh, Kevin Falk, you know, all these guys, you know, how many times did those guys just get open and just little dump pass, right? It's it's one of those things that Tom Brady, and I understand, like, I, I'm not a big Tom Brady, Brady fan. That's because part of it is just Patriots, right? It's just, it is what it is. I'm not here to like the Patriots. But a lot of people say, like, look, the guy, the guy's They're put successful. in the right position and he's put in the right system. And these these receivers are always open. He's finding the open guy. But like you, know, you watch decision. some of the you watch some of the, the the game film and it's like these guys are open by five yards. Nobody even close to them. You know anybody could fit a pass in there. Um, you know it just is what it is. But I said I think that's it's it's the big question mark in New England, right? Is Jared Stidham is that? So what, like I really think like you said like Cammy though like you like if they bring Cam Newton in, you gotta think of at least one ten games of them. That's if Cam oh, plays all ten. But yeah. uh, Stidham like with Stidham like. People, New England's whole defense is back except like three linebackers and one tackle. Um, 
and they you just, you're going to run safety. it. They've tweaked that a little bit, and their one of their high picks was another safety. They brought in a safety Phillips from uh, uh, Eric's Eck of the Woods there from San Diego, and quite frankly, I like the guy, and I think he's going to be good on special teams. Adrian Phillips, and I think yeah. he's going to. I think there's a good chance he'll be he'll be on the field because we like to play New England. When I say we, New England likes to play a lot of three safeties, and they do it well. So I don't know. There's more to like. I'm. You know, me it's Aaron. one of those things too. All the these... only thing I don't like is our is our fullback Dublin. God bless you. He retired. That's unfortunate. But he's had a lot of injuries lately. So I'm, I'm a little, you know, I wish that didn't happen. But we got two other uh, fullbacks in camp. I really yeah, can't wait. I'm excited. I'm excited. You guys lost your your offensive line coach too. You know, he's he's That's kind of huge. been one of the masterminds, right? Like you've seen when he retired the last time. You know, your guys' line, our line, line play was, was was not great. And Horrendous. When Horrendous. you have some of these really good offensive line coaches and really good, you know, offensive coordinators in general, they can make up for a lot of, you know, if, uh, problems that you might have. So, anyways, just wanted to touch on that. Like I said, obviously, it's a before, super uh, popular Before topic, we get but... off New England, though, I do want to say one more thing. I'm kind of excited the more I think about it. Like, Jared Stenham has sat for a year, and – uh I preach this all the time. Poor Eric's going to listen to this and our uh, our listeners. I preach it all the time. I think you do a quarterback wonders by letting them, you know, progressively learn the system. Yeah. So I'm very excited. And, and you know, maybe this is all complete bullshit, but in New England, they're saying that he really makes strides in the scouting team and stuff. We have no idea. All we're going to know is when the, he lines up to take snaps. And it's not going to be perfect. And there's not. he's probably going to have – Let's face it, he's a rookie quarterback. He'll probably have more than 10 interceptions or at least 10. And I can live with that. It's not going to be – you know, I'm very interested to see how this, this works out. Uh, like I've always said, and Bill, we trust. But, you know, I'm, I'm very excited to see what Stidham's got. And hopefully they just, you know, set him up to be successful. Just yep. maybe maybe you don't let him right out – let him, like, let it fly loose right off the hop. But maybe they will. You know, you got Miami week one, and anything could happen. For all we know, two is going to be out there just – you know, running for his life. Hopefully, he's not. Hey, well, for guess what? Sake, at, the, you know? at the end of the day, I, I, I'll, I'll make sure you have a Cam Newton number one uh, jersey for oh, the New England Patriots when he gets signed there in, at, in the next. At the end months. of the day, it doesn't even matter because <laughs> uh, at the end of the day, New England's going to lose at least one game to Miami because that's what we do every year. Even every when year. we're like, well, except for the year we went eighteen and one. Yeah. Jesus, let's not talk about that. God, yeah, damn well, that, that'll be the next. Podcast. Eli, what the hell, bro? We should just do a podcast. I think everyone would enjoy just a podcast on on the two Super Bowl. Lo- Actually, we could do all three Super Bowl losses. We could just break them down bit by bit by bit, both to the I Giants called, and uh, to the Eagles. I called that one the Giants, though. Yeah, you did. I called um, it. <laughs> like I said, I and Cam Newton, you know, he was he was adamant about he wanted to be a starter, uh, no matter where he signed this year. He if he wasn't a starter, he didn't want to sign. And I think, according to him, he's you know, opened up his ears a little bit better and he kind of saw that Jameis Winston had to take a backup role. Maybe he'll have to take one too. And it's, it's hard, right? When you have that big of a personality, what do you do? But uh, another guy and you've that been, he's... And you've been successful in the year, like in the league, and yes, you know, for a long time. Yeah. Um, so the other guy, and it's for the Chargers. Also, Trevor called them the San Diego Chargers earlier. Don't worry, that only happens three they times. They should still episode. be in. Oh my god, they should still be there. Actually, I kind of I'm probably, sad that they're not because me and you were going to go down to San Diego and see a game, which would have been were, wicked. It would have been, um, and then, you know, maybe in the future, maybe we could go see them somewhere else. Maybe they're we'll playing like Portland. One. Maybe, maybe they're, we'll see two games. <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe they're playing in Portland in like five years or St. Louis or something, right? When they get moved again, uh, but they're they're really trying to build up their offensive line. You know, they traded Russell Okung, their left tackle, for Trey Turner. They grabbed Brian Belaga from Green Bay in free agency. You know, they still have Pouncey playing center. They can, you know, throw a couple guys in at guard. There's a couple different guys, Forrest Lamp, uh, Dan Feeney, all these guys they can throw in there. But Jason Peters has apparently, according to rumors, broke it down to either returning to the Eagles to play left tackle for them or making the switch and joining the Chargers. So that would be three new pieces on the O-line, all that at some point have been really good between, you know, Blaga, Jason Peters, and Trey Turner. And pairing that up with, you know, that's 
and that's what this team's going to be, right? And maybe that's where he's thinking, I, you know, I'll be the starting left tackle. There is no, there's no competition for it in in with the Chargers, and that's what they want to be. They want to be a dominant right from the line forward. I don't know why they didn't do this when Philip Rivers was there. You know, why would you ever want to give your your pocket quarterback a good pocket? Doesn't make any sense, right? So, but they're. You know, they're talking to Jason Peters, which this guy, he's putting out film. He's putting out tape on on, on, Inst- on Instagram and all these other places trying to show these people, which is kind of funny because when he broke into the league, he actually played tight end in uh, way back in the day. And he College. came out and said, look, I, I'm going to show you my blocking tape. This is how I want to get into the league. And it worked. You know, he 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 got there, not only so. worked. He was a he was a pro bowler for years and one of the years, bats. and he's and one of the bats, obviously so. he's on the wrong side of thirty. You know, he's not a he's not that young pup that you you know a lot of people want. But like you said, it's it's you can probably get him on a one or two year deal. You know, not big not big money. Even you know, if he guy, gives you six eight games, you got to think it's going to be worth it. Like you know what I mean? Yeah. And he's, you know, he's 38 years old. So he's, like I said, not a young buck. You know, he's one of the probably one of the always older. always injuries on, like, the defense and offensive line. So yeah. even if he doesn't break camp with somebody, he, yeah, uh, he, he, he missed, for sure he, will find a job. He missed three games last year, played all of 2018, and he only played in seven games um, in 2017. So he's the last couple of years he's been decent, but he's also, you know, like, obviously dealt with some injury issues. Well, but he's, he's a somewhat slowly declining you know like it is what it is he's been great forever and he's Listen, been consistent so he is better than sam tevy or trent scott or any of these other guys that they want to try to walk out there for the chargers that Never was my only this was my only thing that i i said when the chargers didn't grab a tackle i said i can understand it i don't agree with it because i still think i'd rather you know tristan Wirfs or jared jedrick wills or whoever for the At next, least you got Blaga. For the yeah, for the next ten years, compared to Jason Peters for one. But if you can get a, a good player, and you can build your team still, and you think you can Jason Peters right now, and you can deal with the offensive line issues in the future, whether it's free agency or whatever, that's fine. But anyways, I just I would be very happy if the Chargers got him, um, just because like I said, I think it really fits into what the Chargers want to do. Like I said, I think they're going to be a downhill run no matter who it is whether it's herbert playing the pistol or tyrod taylor you know playing out there gonna be running around throwing his five yard you know play action passes crosses and you know slants and everything else and five yard outs it's what they want right they want to protect everybody want to give them the best chance of you know having time back there which it it's it's a it's a smart thing to do at the end of the they day, can't so. go wrong with adding Peters. Agreed. No. So that's like it. That's that's the two rumors. You know, and the cam one's been going on forever, and I think we even brought it up here again. But they like said it's getting down to the nitty gritty where <laughs> all these other quarterbacks are gone. You know, Andy Dalton, James Winston, everybody else is gone, and it's just Cam sitting by himself. You know, so it's we'll, we'll see what happens there. But now to get into the schedules. Uh, so what we're gonna do is obviously so not happy. So not page, happy. The, the Patriots and the Chargers, you know, both their schedules released along with everybody else. They did a, seemed like a five hour thing for it um, on, on, online. They said for, for the whole time, they're like, oh, look, we got, we're going to go down, break down each team, blah, blah, blah. And we're not going to tra- break down every team because who would want to do that? But Trevor is a Patriots fan and I am a Chargers fan. So we're going to just break down just a quick little. Everyone's seen it on NFL Network, wherever, you know, a game by game, just a quick, like, eh, do I give that a win? Do you you want to go through every game, or do you just want me to pick, like, the ones that I think are ridiculously hard? I think you can touch on the ones that you think are going to be ridiculously ridiculously hard, but I think we just go down really quick and just, like, a quick, like, yeah, that's probably a win. Yeah, that's probably, like, just off the top of your head. Like, we'll just, we won't won't be too serious about it. I'm just loading it up right now. Give me two seconds. I don't know why this is taking so long. But, uh, yeah, so you start off. So who do you guys play in week one? Week one, boy, I guess I'm looking forward to this. 
This could be Imano Imano. This could be rookie versus rookie. This could be Stidham versus the newest. We got him at five, didn't have to trade up. Tua from Alabama, boy, for all the bragging rights. Actually, both these quarterbacks were SEC quarterback. I'm pretty sure I'm right on that one. Don't quote Thank me. You. Anyways, Trevor's, so, Trevor's yeah, famous line, by the way, people. Oh, and we're in, we're in New England, so that helps us big time. Miami is very like they're upgraded on both sides of the ball. I still think I'm going to give New England a little bit of an edge here when it comes to their offensive line. Um, I do like our D. I love our D. Like, I think Miami's going to be fast improved, but I think we squeak and, and a nail biter. I'm, I'm going to go by. Uh, I'm going to say by three. I think we squeak by Miami. Just okay. because we're at home. Um, yep. So I'm going to give a big W here, and it's early cool. in the year. The first win. Miami's the Patriots so are winning. Much, so much change in Miami. This is the only reason that there's not enough. They need more time to uh, glue or to jive. There's a word I'm and looking that's, for there, Eric. Uh, that's going to be one of the weird things about this season. Uh, when you have a lot of gel. turnover, and a lot, that's the word I was looking for. Thank I you, gotcha. Murray. So uh, the gel. Uh, New England, let's be fair here. New England needs the gel, too. She's not TV 12 anymore. Tommy, Tommy who? Jared Stidham, boy. Here we go. Here we go. All right. The so air apparent. One giving us the edge. Now I'm going to jump right off. This is a game I don't like. I'm so mad about one of them. Is uh, We're in Seattle the next week. So there's a time dun, dun, change. Dun. You don't want to play there with a rookie quarterback. It, quite frankly, it's quite scary. They're not – Seattle, people don't give them enough credit. Uh, Pete Carroll and them have slowly basically rebuilt that D. Uh, a lot of different names, and they still got Wagner. But I like them. They're tough. They're gritty. They win close ball games, and they got Russell Wilson, who's uh, quietly become one of the best quarterbacks in the league. Um, he he can just make shit happen when play breaks down. He, him and Aaron Rodgers are two of the best. And quite frank, and well, we'll have to give a shout out to Holmes there too. But anyway, so I like I was telling Eric, super not happy that we got a like, like people will say, well, that they're not that great. Seattle's good, especially at home, man. Uh, Seattle's probably spots. one of the most frustrating teams to watch because they yeah, have the potential to be so it. good. They grind and it too. They do like they have one of the best quarterbacks in the league. And you'll look at the stack card and through three and a half quarters, you're not and all kidding. of a sudden Russell shit. Wilson's Russell Wilson's got hundred and twenty eight yards and a touchdown and like thirty yards on the ground, and they're winning seventeen to fourteen somehow like you're just like how is this team that can be so dominant at points just they just take off and i guess pete carroll's got like they keep on winning they keep on making the playoffs they get the one super bowl they have the other one they lost but pete carroll's got this huge long leash and it's i said they, they obviously have something right but you just wonder if there's just that untapped potential that they could make it to the next level well, they haven't there's like i said they're rebuilding now they got the quarterback they're paying him a lot of money but they're a funny team. They cut guys on the offensive line a lot. Like, they just seem to solve their offensive line problem, and then they'll cut one of their better guys, and it just creates a new new problem. Yeah, um, new problem. They're slowly coming around. They're filling in key positions again. I, I like Seattle. I'm going to give Seattle the W here. I think New England goes in there. They lose They lose by seven. All right. That's a road game. So we're one on one here week two or week three. They go uh, Vegas Raiders come into New England. play the Raiders. And they're going to – even though I think the Raiders are better, like uh, have vastly improved, I'm gonna give New England a W there. Another nail biter. We'll say another three point win, or we'll go. Actually, I'll stretch it to ten. Okay. Then uh, week four, which is a game I just told Eric, I was so not, I was disgusted to see this team <laughs> on the schedule, along with another team, which I'm gonna get to. But Kansas City, are you kidding me? We played them last year and the year before. Like, anyways, this just reminds me of when we had always played Peyton Manning, even though they're not in our division. Because Tommy has to play, give what I mean. So well, I think it's, it's BS. I think and a lot of it's KC. with the playoff. And we're going to give KC a good. A lot. A lot of it though is is point win because I don't want to you, be fourteen. The other thing yeah. is though is you play you play against the first like you play. I'm pretty sure the way it works is you play against the first place teams in like all the first place teams for all the divisions in the AFC every year. So when you're finishing first every year, you play all the best teams because you're going to see two other teams on here lot, yes. that they both that they both also finish first and that you have to play them, right? So that's what it is, right? When you're finishing at the top every year, 
that's you got to play the best, and that's the way. That's their kind of way of oh. doing parody, oh, and, and that's the way of putting in. And for the record, people, not only are we playing Casey, but we're playing him at Arrowhead. Thanks, NFL. Thank you. With a rookie quarterback. Thank you. Hey. Um. Then we got. Then we come back in week uh, week five. I'm gonna try to power through something a little bit of this, with Eric. Yeah. We got Denver. Uh, I think they're improved. They stocked up on their offense. We'll see what they got. They're in New England. I'm gonna give uh, New England a win here. I'm gonna say by ten. I'm feeling good. Uh, that probably won't happen, but I'm gonna say W there. So for people listening, Casey, I got Casey to beat us fairly well. I'm gonna say thirteen, but I really I want to say fourteen. But I'm a New England fan, so go frack yourself. So Casey we're uh, we're sitting what? We're sitting two and two. I got them out. I think no. Nope. Three and two. We're, that's correct. Thank you. I, I'm then, keeping uh, track. Oh, Don't you. worry. You just you just say win thank losses. You just think you. Another, another. We got to play the 49ers. Well, it's not like they made the Super Bowl last year or anything. Yeah, they did. Jimmy G is going to come into New England and just sling the rock around. I'm giving the 49ers a win here by ten. All right, so we're three and three. We're you know we're looking up. We're you know we're not above, but we're not below 500. So there you go. Uh, here we go. We got Buffalo in Buffalo. This is week. Uh, this is week eight, people. And uh, Buffalo, they're gonna, Buffalo fans are gonna love this one because you guys are gonna beat us by seven. Ooh. Actually, you guys are gonna beat us by yeah seven. Jared uh, Siddham's are, going through the table. Touchdown! He's, you guys are gonna beat us. We're in Buffalo. You guys are gonna get us. Then we're gonna go on the road the following week, and we're gonna beat the Jets, and we're gonna beat the Jets by ten. Stidham's just gonna show Darnold how it is, you know, rookie or not. Um, then we come back with week 10. This is another team I'm really disappointed we have to play again. But like Eric said, when you win, you play good teams. We got Baltimore. And Baltimore did nothing but spank us last year. Baltimore's going to do pretty much the same thing. I'm going to give that a, a L for New England here. I think we'll beat one of these top teams. But I think we have a better week. We have I, think better the I, think, I think it's, an, I think it's the, the, uh, next, the next team that you beat. Because yeah, I think with – And I think you guys use, are going to use Adrian Phillips in that – smaller linebacker that that quick shifty linebacker role mm. and have him kind of mirror well mirror lamar that's what we did when we played them uh, and by we i mean the chargers uh what the chargers did when they played against baltimore in the playoffs they kind of had like they didn't play with any they played with like zero linebackers i'm pretty sure it was all safeties and dbs and stuff that whole game and it was just to keep up with the speed right like yes it's a powerful run game yes you have mark ingram coming downhill everything else but a lot of it's just keeping it's, you just have to have that quick, twitchy, you know, explosiveness uh, on D, right? So, anyways, uh, so next week so after Baltimore, you guys have they go on the road and beat Houston. This is huge because you know not only do you see Lamar here in his second year, but here here comes uh, what is it? His fourth year, I think, at the helms uh, for Watson. Uh, yeah. Yes, and he, uh, he's one of my favorite young quarterbacks. The what? I know people hate uh, Bill Murray, his coach. Bill, Bill O'Brien, not Bill Murray. Oh, Bill O'Brien, Murray's a sorry. comedian. Oh, he's a beauty. <laughs> uh, I think we beat Houston. We come home, beat Arizona on a nail biter. I'm gonna say by. I'm gonna say, actually, yeah, I'll say by six. Okay. Then uh, I think we're gonna make a run here. I think we get the Chargers. I want to say. I'm just gonna uh, say that anyways because I just want to bug uh, Eric. Um, uh, so Jared's Jared's Stanham, and they just go in there and, and they win by they win by ten. It's a huge win. You know, it's a huge win. You know, Bosa had him on his back, but he just comes away with the game-winning drive. And then, well, two game-winning drives, back-to-back -back drives in the fourth quarter with points. They won by 10. Um, they lose to the Rams, also in L.A. They lose to Miami, in Miami, because we lose to them once a year. I'm going to keep that trend going. Uh, I'm going to say, what the hell? We beat Buffalo in New England, and I'm going to go with uh, by three. And then we uh, we beat the Jets at home as well again. So that leaves what is that at nine and seven? Nine and seven. Damn it! <laughs> I really I really can't change. I really can't change any of it. Like I look at it, like I don't know. Like I really think they beat. Okay, so the teams I don't like that I'm really mad they got to play is KC, San Francisco, Baltimore, Seattle. Seattle for sure. They got to play Buffalo twice, and Buffalo was really good last year, and mm -hmm. I, I think they've improved even more this year. But you know, you're, I'm excited. You know, it's a challenge for them. It's a challenge for us. Miami's got better. This whole division's got better. The Jets, they actually drafted an offensive lineman tackle, which is the best thing they could have done. They kind of need some receiver help there, but they can find some veterans, um, and you'll find some receivers, I'm sure. 
So I'm excited to get this year going. But, you know, when you got teams like KC, Baltimore, man, those two teams are no joke. They're Super Bowl bound. Like, they're going to be really good this year. Um, San Francisco, if they stay healthy, they're going to be close. But Seattle, even if they don't, I think they have – I think um, San Fran has the pieces. I think San Fran has the pieces no matter what um, to be good, right? Like even if oh. you have a, a a defensive lineman go down, you know, you have, they have such good depth. The only one you got to oh, worry about sure. is Jimmy G. But I think even in Shanahan's system, I think even without Jimmy G, I think you can kind of get by. You know, maybe don't get a seventh round rookie in there like he did. People with remember though. They do. They, people forget though. He. He hasn't started that many games, and last year was like his first full season at the Helms. So if he yeah. can come, but like, so now, and he's got a sniff of the playoffs. He got playoff wins. Yeah, I didn't throw for that many yards in the playoffs, but it's to get through it. It's experience it. He's got a great team around him. Um, you got to play to your strengths, and they run the ball really, really good. So I'm just gonna go out there and say Jimmy G will improve this year. Um, how much I don't know. Good enough to win a Super Bowl? I think he's good enough to win a Super Bowl for sure. Um, it's hard to say what's gonna go on. People. Don't don't sleep on the Rams too. They lost some key pieces and stuff, but they're they're far from junk. Um, yeah. So look for them maybe to rebound. They'll be very. I'm looking forward to watching them play. I, I enjoy yeah. watching the Rams. Well, there you go. So the I can't you, wait to see this division this year. It's going to be you wide heard, open. I'm you heard it here first, everybody. The Patriots nine and seven. are going nine and seven from the Patriots fan himself. <laughs> How, what was the stay, last time you said that? Stay, uh, stay up, upgraded. I'll find another win here somewhere. I'll look the schedule <laughs> over and let you guys know next week. But there's one more win here. We'll squeak one more win out here somewhere. Yeah, when you get Cam and you pick up Cam Newton. Um, oh, so <laughs> going, going for the Chargers schedule. Uh, <laughs> we're, you know, obviously there's they're 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 my team. They're not, you know. I'm sure a lot of people are like, "Oh, I'm, I'm out. I don't want to listen to this because it's the Chargers, and who cares about the Chargers?" Well, I do. God damn it! And that's all that matters. Uh, so you have with us. Uh, you get we're playing against to start it off. He is the number one overall pick in the NFL draft. It's Joe Burrow and the Cincinnati Bengals in Cincinnati, and I'm just given. I'm, Great, he's a rookie, and I understand we're probably going to be playing with Tyrod Taylor at this point. But it's going to be the Chargers, and they're going to be winning the first game against the Bengals. So they're going to start off 1-0. So that's the first win. I just I, – I don't – I don't I understand the kid could be good, but I'm just wondering, like, without an off, you know, off-season workout, blah, blah, blah. And a lot of people are going to say, well, Cam Newton didn't have an off-season workout that year. His first rookie year, and he, and he came out and threw for 500 yards his first game. Look, that's Cam Newton. I'm sure Joe Burrow is going to be good, but I, I just feel like that defense is going to get – he's he's used to seeing all these other defenses out there in the in, in college. He's hasn't seen a defense as quick and as powerful. And that's this, is throw the stuff at him. this is this the is show. This is the show. This is Joey, the show. Joey Bosa behind me is going to show him how it is. Next game, we go in and we play against the Kansas City Chiefs in our brand new stadium. It's also the Rams' brand new stadium. It's more the Rams' stadium than ours, I think. But we're going to play against KC, so we're not playing them in Arrowhead yet. And that is going to be a big fat L. I just, I'd love to say that we beat them and we play them really well. Like we kept Mahomes last division, year. Division games, yeah. Yeah, like Mahomes didn't throw for. 200 yards. He was 170 something and 182, I think, last year against us. So he was super low in yards against us. And our defense is that good. Maybe we kind of play that run the ball and try to pull, you know, do the clock thing. But I just feel like they have one or two big plays in them every game. And that's going to give the Chiefs the win. I'm just being realist here, people. We got to keep it real. Uh, next game, we are hosting the Carolina Panthers and Teddy Bridgewater. So they got the new coach. They got the new quarterback. They drafted Derek Brown in the first round. So that's a run stuffer. We aren't really a big – we're going to run the ball some, but, you know, you got to see what he can do against us. But I just don't think the Carolina Panthers – I think they're in kind of like a half-ass rebuild. I don't think they really know what they want to be yet. Most of their uh, draft picks were on that defense. Uh, yeah, I think they all were. And it's just, it's just Majority, weird. And yeah. I understand you're just trying to make it – you know, you're trying to make – they went with a lot of, like, surefire picks that they didn't have a super high ceiling, but they had a 
a really you know high floor. Blue collar boys are going to play. Just, yeah, yeah, that, that you know are going to play. I just like I said, I think at this point in time, I just feel like the Chargers. We said a lot of people, you know, talk bad about the Chargers because they kind of had a bad season last year. They dealt with injuries. They dealt with the whole Melvin Gordon thing, his holdout. Derwin James didn't play, you know, pretty much at all. Joey Bosa was out a little bit. Just everything, right? So it all adds up. And yeah, so give them the I, think w? We, I think we're giving them the W. Next game we play in Tampa Bay. We're playing some guy named Tom Brady, whoever that is. What a beauty. He's a, he's a joke. And I think we're going to keep it a lot cl- closer than people think. Just because I think our offense is going to give him a little bit of trouble. And I I understand people would just assume that Tom Brady's going to throw for 500 yards a game. I just hope you guys don't come out in zone like you did in the playoffs. Oh, my God. Well, that's, that was just that's, disgusting. But, that, but that's Gus Bradley's so system. The game was over at halftime. That was the most disappointing game against the Chargers. That was terrible. I think we've ever played. Yeah, that was, it was brutal, man. I even messaged I you politely. It was I like, wanted to cry. I, I had a lot of hope. Um, I, I will give the win to them. I just... I think it's going to be a lot closer, and I, I don't think the their offense is going to be... Just, I hope the, like, frack, you guys do not play zone the whole time, because Tommy's goddamn good in zone. So. Yeah, and it's, it's it's if if you have the speed, I think you're fine, and I think in a lot of other scenarios, that game wasn't even so much zone, it's, it's you guys just ran it down, like, the Patriots just ran it down the Chargers. Every, that everything game. we did on offense, we, we did well in that game. Like you had a couple, but it was, it, I think it was. it was the run game. You guys were so powerful in that run game that year. And I think that's what's going to work out good for the Patriots this year is, is you have that run game behind you that you have kind of They're been going to lean on. They're going to lean on our boys. I think they understood. So I'll give uh, give the week four win over to Tampa Bay. Then we go against the Saints. I think the Saints are going to be one of the top three or four teams in the league. I know they are every year, but I think they just they got even better. They did release a uh, Wartford off their line, so that kind of makes more sense why they brought in Ruiz. And yeah, I just think the Saints are going to be really good. And I don't think you know against the Saints, they're you know we're in New Orleans, we're in the dome. You just got to give it to Drew Brees. So we're now down to two and three, but that's okay because we're going on a run here. Because I think that, like you, I think the Jets are going to be not that great this year. Um, <laughs> I think they're going to be up and down. I think they're going to be up and down too. And I think yeah. Sam Darnold is going to see a couple extra ghosts when he sees Derwin James and all these other guys flying around there. Kenneth Murray, the new linebacker. I think he's going to be thinking, what the heck is going on out there? These guys are so fast. They're so explosive. And I'm giving us a win against the Jets in week six. We then go down to Miami. That Tua guy, who needs Tua? Guess what? This week too, we're in we're in week we're in week seven. Jordan Herbert's coming off the bench. He's coming. Tyrod, you did okay. Okay, we understand you get us a win against the Jets, but you haven't really been explosive enough for us. So Justin Herbert's coming off the bench. He's the new starter, number ten. You know, number one in the it, it, number one in your pamphlet. Or number 10 in your pamphlet, number one in your heart. There we go. I, fi- I fixed that. I was trying to remember the saying. And I think they win against Miami. I just, I think Nail Miami. Hunter. Is it close? I don't think so. Because I don't think Miami's, I think a lot of people have tried to talk themselves into Miami being really good. I understand they got Jordan Howard and I understand they got Tua and I understand they got a couple other pieces. But I think they're still, I think a lot of the stuff was just band-aids in a lot of spots. And I still think they don't really have a lot of, elite talent to kind of get them over the edge. I think um, the draft helped them. I, I think, think the draft I helped think them like too. Any franchise when you tear it down like this takes multiple drafts, uh, multiple picks. Yeah, no, I think I think that's a smart thing, right? I think they're great playing to be guys. Good. I think they did a good job. Like I think they brought in a lot of talent, like yeah. you said, and uh, they brought in a lot of guys in free agency. And well, like I said to you, it's going to take weeks for them to gel to figure out what they have. Um, and I think though Miami will kind of do what they did last year is get about halfway through the year and really take off. Like everybody will know the system. They'll start winning close games or uh, being close games and they could very well end up with an even record or just below 500. But I think yep. they'll, you'll see towards the end of the year, they'll improve. I think they got the right coach there. Yeah. And really I, I don't think they're going to, I don't think they're going to be the Jacksonville Jaguars who I think are going to be, 
I think Gardner Minshew's going to give them the fighting chance, but I don't think I think they're trying to be bad. And they brought in Mike Glennon to be the backup for Gardner Minshew. If Mike Glennon's your backup, I know Trevor likes Mike Glennon. It's not, not a going great win a lot choice. of games though. Not going to win yeah. lots of games. No. No, so so talk about the Jaguars and how they're not as great. That's where we're going to get another W. So we are now up to 5 and 3 after week 8 cuz we're going to beat up on the Jaguars. Once again, the defense I think is just going to be too good against them. And I think our offense is I said you get all these uh, these weapons, right? You get Keenan Allen, you got Mike Williams, you got Austin Eckler. You know, you get Hunter Henry, you get all these guys. I think no matter who you have at quarterback there, I think they're going to be good, but I think at this point Justin Herbert's in there. And I think he's going to try. They're going to try to really kind of figure out what works best for him. I think that's going to be good. Now, week nine, they're going to play the Raiders. The black hole. We're playing them at home, and I'll give this one to the Raiders. I just I don't know why. I, I feel like the Raiders aren't going to be that great. But at the end of the day, I understand that they're. We're probably going to go one and one against the Raiders. It's just how it is. Division it's, teams. It's just this division, right? Like you just you go it against the division, and unless they're terrible, doesn't matter if one team's like got no wins. They always play the division teams really well. It's yeah. So that's that's exactly it. But I love next. It. I love it. Next week, we're gonna play against the Broncos. The Broncos went all speed in the draft. Every guy I think try, they tried to draft was a track star, which is good. I think everyone's bought right in on Drew Lock, and I like Drew Lock. I think Drew Lock's a they're trying to make him successful, and they definitely gave him weapons. So we'll see what goes yeah. on. So the only problem is maybe they, they they've dealt with it a little bit. I know the Broncos. A lot of people thought that they had the best draft, you know, in in the entire draft, and but that, maybe that line's still a little bit susceptible. But their their defense is good. You know, you got Von Miller there. You got Bradley Chubb. You got all these guys, and we're in Denver for that game. I'm gonna give that one to Denver. Just it's so loud there. That crowd is just. I I went there. I was in Denver. I went went to go see a game there, and it was so loud. It was ridiculous. That was actually the year that they the Broncos won the Super Bowl, and Brock Osweiler got benched, and, and uh, Peyton Manning came came off and won the game. It was terrible. Get it done. Yeah. Next thing you know, we play. We're on the road again. We go from Denver, which is probably gonna be cold because it's in November. We're now jumping over to Buffalo. Probably also going to be cold because it's Buffalo. And that's us saying that from we're from Canada. But I think we beat the Buffalo Bills. And, you know, I don't think – I think it will be a, a slugfest. I think it's going to be a defensive battle. I think – I just don't – I just don't have a lot – I understand what Josh Allen can bring to the game. And I understand he, he almost feels like a Tebow or one of these guys that – the guy just has it that he, the guys want to play for him, and they just seem to get the wins. You know, I don't know how they do it, and I don't know why, why the Bills. And obviously, the Bills play good it's a, defense. It's a big year. It's a big year for that boy. It's going to be very interesting to see if he, he gets better with his accuracy, um, overthrows guys a little bit sometimes, and misses. Uh, is it the medium throws? And we'll say, but he's a hell yeah. of an athlete. The guy can rip yards off. Like, like, you, like he's just he's out there running and he's real. he's so solid right like a lot of people you know a lot of people compare some people compared justin herbert to him because of the big arm and herbert actually tests better than him as in every way as it, when it comes to athletic whether it's 40 that. whether it's three cone all this stuff and herbert's a multi-sport athlete apparently but with with you know Allen, the problem is is he's just so physically physical when in those runs right and he's kind of shifty and he's kind of just that straight straight ahead runner that he kind of makes it work so but like i said i think it's going to be a defensive battle and i think it'll, it'll become a game of turnovers and i think maybe you get him to turn over the ball once or twice something but i'm going to give that win to the chargers next we're going to be at home we're hosting the patriots tom's gone the dynasty's over okay Bill Belichick, I understand the, the he's most, still there. The most important guy still there, man. That's Bill. Yeah, Bill's there. I understand. Don't get me wrong. You know, Shut you guys can Bill. win. You guys can win with anybody. All you need is a, it's all it's all about being a system quarterback over in uh, 
in New England, right? So it doesn't matter who you have at quarterback. All these people all these years have been saying, well, it's Tom Brady. He's the best. So now they're all changing their tune to, well, the best. We got, we got, we got Bill. So as long as we got Bill. So the quarterback doesn't matter is what I got from all the Quarterback matters. <laughs> Wins your games, lose your games. Quarterback matters. And I think, I think you're going to see a lot so of running. System. I think you're going to see a lot Just of running. Just to your quarterback. Them. Yeah. Just that's, to your quarterback. It's huge. Like I said, if you play your typical offense with Lamar Jackson, he's not going to be good. And we, I, it's just somebody I bring up every podcast, and I don't mean to, but he's just the obvious one, right? He's not your your typical pocket passer. And if you tried to make Lamar Jackson a pocket passer, he wouldn't be as good as he is, right? So just adjust your game. And Mike Shanahan, you know, Shanahan's been known for this for their entire career. Andy Reid's been known for this. You know, all these guys, and that's where you can really see where the best offensive coordinators really bring out the best in their players is. They kind of they don't try to put a, a square peg in a round hole. Essentially, is how, the best way to put it. But I think, sure, so. be, I, I think we do. You guys I think I have you guys beaten you guys. I think we're going to be a little better than some people think. And I think the Patriots are going to be good. They're going to be good defensively. But I think we get you guys just on some offensive firepower. Now you is guys it, could uh, just run. Nailed you guys could. Yeah, I think it's a close game. I think a lot of these games are going to be close because I think our defense is going to hold us into a lot of them. And I don't think – I think our offense is going to have the chance to be explosive, but I don't think they're a Kansas City explosive or a Baltimore explosive, you know, or any of these other teams that can just put up 50 points. Like, I think, you know, if the Chargers get to 40 points more than once or twice in this season, I think they're doing very good. But You guys uh, are on fire, yeah. Yeah. And so next we're playing against the Falcons. And I got us beating the Falcons. I think the Falcons are going to be decent. But I think this is, I think it's almost going to be the end for the coach there, Dan Quinn. If he's already been fired and I haven't been keeping up, don't hate me. I'm just, I'm assuming he's still there. No, he's I still think there. This, yeah. I think this is going to be one of his last seasons. I think they're just going to have enough of just, you know, and it's hard, right? You're playing against, now you're in a division with, New Orleans, you're playing in a division with Tom Brady's come over. It's it's been a rough go. You know, they've had they a got, really rough go. They've since... got four games, two games against Breeze, like you just said, and two against Tom. That sucks for them. Yeah, you got yep. Matt Ryan. But man, like just think about that. That's in division. That's four games. That could be the difference between them making the playoffs and not. Like you said, that's tough. Yeah. It's gonna be and interesting. It's, it's dude, like I said, I think they're good. I just I think they're just still missing a bit. And I think the Chargers gonna be on a roll at this point. And keeping on the roll, I see them beat the Raiders. And I know I hate the Raiders. So I can't lose them twice. That's not a possibility. We're going to go over into that new, like, Darth Vader stadium that they got there. That all-black stadium that looks kind of cool. But, you know, we're going to beat up on the Raiders because fuck the Raiders. You know, just win, baby. No, no. Get out of there. You guys haven't been good in a You guys haven't just won in years. Come on. Since the talk rule, since the talk rule, <laughs> essentially what it honestly, is. They, honestly, you guys sent him through like a spiral down. It was, it's been terrible. They had one really um, good year with Carr. That was it. That was it, right? And when he was on his rookie contract, which is the best, you know, best thing you can possibly have. Past that, we play against Denver, which once again, Denver is always a hard team for us to play. Their defense is really good. They're kind so of this game, you guys are at home, good. eh? You guys are at home. This before? game, yeah, this game we're at home, and I think we. I think we win this one. I think they're a good enough team. I think the Broncos, the same thing. We always kind of, last year, we lost both games to them. We shouldn't have lost one of them. And I guess you can say that about any game. Any game has the chance to go back one way or another. But I think they beat the Broncos. I think the defense is just going. I think at that point, I think, you know, Justin Herbert's really kind of got a grasp of it, you know, grasp of the of the system. I think they're just doing better at that point. And then at the end of the year, they're going to lose to KC because KC, I think, is going to go like 14-2 and because I think they're really good. So and KC, I mean, you think, is better than Baltimore this year? Yeah. I think they I think they flop. I think Baltimore is going to really see that a lot of teams are going to – Adjust? The problem is, yeah, I think they're going to adjust, and I think you're going to see a lot of smaller sets against them. I think that's going to give Lamar a little bit of an issue. I can uh... – I will say this. I hope New England's one of those teams that adjust because, you know, I love Bill Belichick, and we have a really good defense, man, but 
some teams are just teams that seem to be able to run on you and just do anything they want to. And Baltimore does that to New England lots. Like, even when they had Flacco, they – Jesus. And it, it's because it's a different way of doing it, right? Like, they don't have your typical – like, you're used to seeing these run games that they were dominant because of power, right? Like I said, that's that's how the Patriots beat the Chargers a couple years ago in the playoffs. They, it was just between, you know, Sony Michelle and all these guys. Like, they just ran it down the Chargers' throat over and over They were rolling Sony right to the fucking Super Bowl. Yeah, and – but with, with Baltimore, it's not so much the power. It's the shiftiness. It's the – RPO kind of stuff. It's the you know the fakes and the play actions and everything else. So you need these linebackers that can fly back and forth side to side, right? And you got to be and, able to read the play. Like you got to not take yeah. the fake or, or bite on a fake. And, and I think Kyle, they're, that's what they're they're hoping, right? I think Kyle Van Noy is good, and I think Hightower is good. And I think all these guys that were on your guys' defense are good, but they're just not. You know, and Patrick Chung, he was fine, but he's on kind of the. The other side of what you would want to No, raise for sure. He's uh, he's declined. He's declined. The last and that's why you brought in Adrian Phillips, speed. right? I think you're going to yeah. use Adrian Phillips in that role. We got role. Brooks and we draft. That's what we drafted with our first second rounder there. Yep. Kyle yeah, so, to uh, dunk it or whatever. So be yeah, interested so to see. I, I'm pumped. I think I think at the end of the day, I think Casey, you know, they're, they're, not, they're not part of that Super Bowl lull. I think they're just going to be a really good team that's going to be scary to play against. But yeah, so that so brings the Chargers. They finished in the 10. first seed for you guys, for you. That's what you're saying, yeah. Casey. Yeah, and I think, NFC. I think, and maybe I'm wrong, but I just feel like maybe the Chargers go ten and six. They could obviously go eight and eight, but I don't think they land any lower than seven and nine. You know, I think that would be like the lowest, and that's if they lose like two games to, um, the like Broncos. I don't think they lose two games to the Raiders, so I think two games to the Broncos. Maybe if they lose that game to the Falcons and maybe if they lose the game to the Patriots, you know. I think the the, the obvious ones they're going to lose are the two to KC, the one against the Saints, the one against Tampa. And that, even the Tampa one's not a given. But, yeah, I think at the end of the day, I think, you know, you split against the Broncos and the Raiders and you split against – and then you lose two to the to KC and that's how you finish against the division. So, I, I just – and I, I know it's a homer pick, and I thought they were going to be really good last year, and they had the chance to be. But I think with them moving in the way they are with a good, solid offensive line, I think they have the chance to be really good. Because that, that was their downfall last year was the offensive line the whole time. So um, I think yeah. – uh, I think uh, – so you like – you okay, one more thought before you move on there. Uh, yeah. So you like their schedule? Do you think it's – like decent, like is it winnable? Or? I think it's decent. I think it's decent. I don't. I, don't, I think it's you know, you Could guys. The AF, yeah, the AFC East isn't as hard. Like you guys have it worse than us because you guys have to play against. You know, I think we're going to be decent. I think the the Broncos are going to be good. I think the Raiders are even going to be good. I don't think anybody in our division. Finishes, I think both of them are going to be better than. Last I don't think year anybody sure. finishes lower than six and ten. I think everybody's going to be pretty good, and we're going to have KC. That's obviously you know, a really good team. Like I said, there's a couple teams that you're kind of, you know, almost, I wouldn't say worried about, but there's some good teams out there. But I think they're going to be, I think they're going to be good. I think it's a fair schedule. It's not terrible. And yeah, like I said, it always helps when you have guys like the Jags, you know, you're playing the Jaguars, you're playing Carolina, who I don't think is going to be good. Both teams so, have a lot of change. Yeah. So that's I like Carolina that. better than I like uh, Jacksonville. There's just been so much change, and they got a good defense. And oh, for you sure, know, just right? things like, like that. The Jags are tanking. They they're doing exactly what the Dolphins did last year, right? They're either trading all their guys or trying to trade them. They're they're doing everything they can to be bad this year. Like I said, whether they're it's gonna, to get there's a good chance they get a run at Trevor. Yeah, for Trevor. Yeah, like I said, whether it's Trevor or, or whether Fields. it's or Fields, exactly one of the two. So. Uh, I'm really um, pumped to see Fields play this year too. It'll be his second year at the helm. Very excited to see him get more tape, more game experience, and see what he is. Um, New England's case, New England can make the playoffs, but they really got to do. They got to have it out with the division, like they always have. I don't think that would be the case, um, for sure. Like you know, maybe I'm. I don't like. I, I'm happy if we split with Buffalo, but man, Buffalo is going to be tough. Uh, we always split with Miami. It doesn't matter how good or how shitty Miami is. They just have our number. They always beat us at least once, um, whether it's a miracle play 
like we've seen them just recently. Or that was, they just that was so good. beat us like they did, uh, I don't know if it was week 16, the last week of the regular season this year, but they came in the new, I think they came in the New England. And, yeah, they did. Oh, or maybe that was Miami. But anyways, regardless, it was Miami. Like, they just beat us up. Like, just, we couldn't run, couldn't pass, you know, so good on Miami. But if we can sweep Miami and sweep the Jets, that's wishful thinking. But, like, I think there, there's your extra wins. Now, if we split with all those teams I just mentioned, you know, it's a tough road because we already talked about Seattle, the 49ers, Baltimore. These teams are no joke. Um, you know, Kansas City. So then we got to play the Rams. The Rams are set. The Chargers could e could beat us. Like Eric said, it could easily be a, a nail biter. Like they got lots of talent on the defensive end of the ball, lots of like weapons on their offense. So, you know, it's gonna it's, it's awesome. This is why we love football. I can't wait. You know, there's gonna be some. I'll probably grind my teeth. I'll have to get a mouth guard for God's sakes. Being a New England fan this year, but uh, let's go Stidham. Make it happen, boy. I'm a, I believe. Nobody, nobody's crying for Patriots fans. I can guarantee you that. Um, no, see it's, all it's, in the playoffs. See you all in the playoffs. <laughs> we'll see. But no, I, I think I think there's gonna be some good teams out there. And what we'll probably what we're gonna do when we finally find out for sure that there's like obviously the schedule release is a nice thing. We're still a long way away from knowing what they're gonna do. Because say if, say we don't have fans, right? Say they do it in a neutral site or you know, I'm really I can't, thinking we're gonna do I, that. I can't I don't think see, neutral site, but I don't think I just be can't see them having an, a situation at this point where you're going to be able to jam 40 to 60,000 people into a stadium. I just don't see that being the case, right? Like how, how I don't do think you so do at that? all. Doesn't so, regardless to any sport, let's be honest. Regardless to yeah. any sport, I just don't see it. I think you're going to see like Eric just mentioned a lot of teams with nobody in the stadiums. And that's fine as long as we get the damn product out yeah. there and we can watch on TV. the ratings like they'll get the yeah. ratings and and to be honest you know the teams the the players are the ones that are going to suffer in the future years because they're gonna like we've mentioned before these players all their salary cap all the salary caps in those these leagues are all done because of you know revenue and you know everything gained and if it's these gonna be slightly down are, yeah the, well slightly they're, they're gonna have all these teams are gonna have eight home games that are gone that aren't they're not going to make a single dime from concessions, from you know ticket sales, from all this stuff. You know, some of these two people pay Merch. big money to be in at the stadiums. Suites, yeah, exactly, right. So beer sales just, are going to hit a ticket. It's, it's everything, right? So, Soda, but at the same time, dogs. at that point, do you deal with you know a lot of it's, you know, say you're, you know, Casey's obviously known to be hard to play in. Denver's play, hard to play in. Seattle, you know, a lot of these places. Now they don't have fans. Maybe you don't have that home field advantage. Jared Stidham, baby, make her happen, Haas. Oh my God, here we go. So, um, so talking about how they NFL, you know, it's talking about their schedule and trying to figure out their season, and we're talking about all this. Unfortunately, a, t a, a league that actually had their season going has, you know, officially canceled it, and that is the American Hockey League, the AHL. So the league down from the NHL, where all their prospects and stuff kind of reside and kind of get to develop they have canceled the season um no no calder cup this year it's it's unfortunate you know a lot of these guys they they really this is the way from the show right even a lot of these guys they get in at the end of the year right those last 10 games or so in the nhl for these teams that haven't made it or maybe they just want to rest a guy here or there or whatever it is a lot of these guys get in and that's when they get to show look i think i belong in the big leagues. I think I belong in, in the NHL. And, you know, I, I think I belong here. And a lot of the guys, that's where you first get the, your first taste of them and your first sight of them. So, you like said, maybe they still get called up. I don't know how that would work. I don't know. Obviously, they still have the rights to them, all these NHL teams. But they like said it's maybe they don't have the same you know, ability to show what's going on. But see, there's, a, uh, there's another example. Uh, that you just brought to light with the NHL will have to be some adjust adjustments. Like, can they have six more guys on their active roster or at least be able to practice with the big team? Like uh, like Eric just said, they're going to have, like, if they come back, probably a little mini training camp. But there's going to be so many games tried to be forced in a condensed time, let's say. You know, there's going to be injuries. So there's, there's going to have to be some adjustment. Well, you're going to have to think about that too, right? Because a lot of these guys, they're going to be, you know, in the regular season, you know, a lot of these guys are already in shape, right? All these guys in the HL. 
but I can guarantee you these AHL guys don't have home gyms like Sidney Crosby or Nathan McKinnon or all these guys. They don't right? get the money. Exactly. They don't have the money still... yet. They're only making, exactly. you know, under $100,000, which is still good money, but depending on where they have to live. But, you know, they're taking a, a shot. So you almost think that the NHL would have to allow these teams to carry more guys on the roster, you know, and not the NBA roster, but carry them the yeah. foot tip club oh, so they sorry. can get into the gyms they can get to the practice facilities they can kind of get in the role of it so if you do have to call them up and you do have to put them on the game you know you're not grabbing this guy that was just sitting on his couch for the past four or five months whatever it's been eating you never know when this potato is. chips yeah eating lace potato chips you know trying to do the home workouts right like all these instagram guys i see i think ads every day it's like you want to learn how you to do your home workout? And I'm like, nah, X. <laughs> Swipe past that. I don't need to, I don't need to know a home workout. Lord um, thunder Jesus, boy. I, I do need a home workout, let's be honest. But no, it's like I said, it, you'd almost like to see that the NHL. You'll be both. Yeah, you almost like to see that the NHL has a chance to, you know, carry a couple extra guys just to have them in well, playing shape. They could, be, they could be in shape too, like you said. But there's, you know, let's say you're in physically good shape. But, uh they're not in hockey shape. Like they're not out there skating around and that's, that's kind of a big deal. So, yeah. and we're talking like, these could be big games. You could be playoff games. These could be games to get you in the playoffs or playoff indications. Um, you know, so there's, there'll be, there'll be, there's so many scenarios and we touched on, did we not touch on the 24 game? No. So I was going to transition over to that. Good job, Trevor. Look at that professional transition. I tried to the NHL 24 team playoff schedule. So this is something that's been proposed. Like I said, it's not a definite thing that's happening yet, but it is something that they have talked about because at this point, we don't know what's going on, right? Everyone's trying to figure it out, but nobody's been able to really figure it out yet. So what they would do is they would have playing games. So, and I don't know, I'm trying to figure it out. I didn't have a chance. Trevor just kind of brought this up to me like two minutes before we started this. We went on there. True Thanks story, Trevor. but I think it's I think it's really <laughs> fascinating. People, a twenty four game playoff uh, has never been done before. It'd be so twenty four team, twenty four yeah, team. So what did I say? Game. You said oh, twenty four game. Yeah, twenty four team playoff. So I think that'd be neat. There's still Eric will break it down for you. I will not cut him off here. I'll let him chime some shit out first. Then I'll chime in and like we normally do. And uh, yeah, so uh, without further ado, Eric, uh, break this down for us a little bit. So I think what here is what they have is they'd have all the top teams they would automatically make it right so your boston's your tampa's your washington philly blues the stars the knights and the avalanche those are all the top teams in either the eastern or western conference and then you'd have essentially like a playoff or like a play-in scenario where the teams that are lower down I said, I obviously don't know. I can't remember if it was a one game playoff, like a winner take all, which would be exciting, or maybe it's a little three games, you know, three games. Yeah, series. I think it was about set of five. So, yeah, three was games. Was it? Okay. Yeah. So, so, the first round, anyways, or whatever. To play so, you'd th that would have Calgary play against Winnipeg with the winner advancing and going to play the Blues. You'd have the Oilers playing the Blackhawks, which the Oilers should win that, but you never know. Uh, that would make them face against. Uh, face off against the stars you'd have the canucks playing the coyotes they would then go play against the vegas golden knights and then you have the predators against the wild in the west and they would play against the colorado avalanche in the next round but like i said dallas st louis the knights and the avalanche all would have a kind of a first round bye and that's how they would do it so it's a different scenario like i said it's 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 not what you'd expect, but you kind of have to, you know, a lot of these teams were still able to make the playoffs. You know, they could have went on a or run. Or just, just like they were close. Like, there's probably a handful of teams that can make the playoffs, especially in the West. And maybe that's or what they looked so at, the right? West. Maybe they said, like, look, you know, we understand there's a possibility. I think one of the only teams, I think maybe Ottawa, Detroit was out, like, back in February, I think. They they were pretty the close. East, Florida's right there. I know Florida's right on top of Toronto. Yeah, right there's a bunch of teams, right? So you have a bunch of teams, and in the East you have, like I said, Boston, Philly, the Lightning, Rangers and, right there and too. Washington making the they they get the first round by, and it'd be Columbus playing against the Islanders. The winner goes to play Boston. You have Pittsburgh and Montreal playing. That they would the winner of that would go 
play against Philly, so probably Pittsburgh, right? I can't see Montreal stealing a series from from Pittsburgh. So then you have Philly versus Pittsburgh. Now there's a playoff series everybody wants to see, you know, that bad blood that's always there every time. Then you have Toronto, the Maple Leafs. They'd be playing the Rangers. And the winner of that not, goes It's in... not Columbus? Damn it. I thought it was no, Columbus. No, no, it's the Rangers. I don't and they'd be, see that, boy. They'd be going to play against the Lightning, whoever won that. That's a that's a tough series. Ooh, I like it. And then you have the Let's Florida go, Panthers boys. playing against the Hurricanes. And the winner of that goes to play against Washington. So it's a different way to do it. I think there's... They said you It'd have to... Be it's you have to figure out something, right? They're trying to limit the games with the rest of it, right? You know, why does Detroit need to keep on playing? I think they're guaranteed, you know, the worst, you know, record in the league. And you can have, you know, Ottawa, maybe they flip flop with somebody else, you know, New Jersey or whoever else is down there. But, you know, do you really is is it really worth it to take the chance to you know, play all these extra games, possibly get more people sick, everything else, right? So there's all this stuff that could go into it. It's 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 an option. He like said, obviously, they're, everybody would like. They're also talking about like still talking about trying to have a bunch of teams in one location uh, to be able to play so many games, like three, almost like three games a day uh, yeah. during the course with no fans, like Eric's mentioned before. Like every other sportsman uh, flirting the idea around. Um, That'd be interesting. We'll see. Like, they have to find host cities, so that's places where the, basically the virus is non-existent anymore, or it's re- it's kind of um, flatlined. Or a smaller uh, like area, right? Where on, you can... Like around New Brunswick, it's flatlined. So yeah, it's 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 a harder thing to do, right? Like what's exactly. with all of this, and you know, it, obviously with all this, it, there's a lot to do with it, right? You know, do you just play? You know, what do you do with the pet players that their teams didn't make the playoffs? Do you pay them still? Do you not pay them? Like, obviously, you'd think you'd have to still pay them. But mm. these are coming from owners that, you know, aren't getting paid. You know, they're not getting the revenue from the TV, you know, from the TV games. They're not fans, getting revenue tickets. from fans or tickets. They're not even getting, you know, if your team's not in the playoffs or not even the playing, maybe don't buy merch for the rest of the year, right? You know, it's... Like, your team, when you make the playoffs, you get money for making the playoffs. Then when you win yeah. around, you get money. That's how it yeah. works. Some people don't realize that, but every round you win, you get a little bit of a, a little bit of some cash flow, basically. Yeah. Um, and if you win the big prize, you get a big uh, influx. And but, a lot uh, of the, good like, on they, they always say like the the best thing for the league would be for Toronto to make the Stanley Cup Finals every year because it would bring in so much that you know the the ratings would be higher. Everything else, you'd Revenue. have so many more. You know, you'd be able to get, get a bigger piece of the pie to the rest of the players, but. It's it's hard. Like I said, there's a lot, right? Like with these players, you know, do you just say like, look, oh, you know, you only, you know, you're on your a record breaking year. You're on your way to have your best season yet, and well, you know what? You're actually gonna miss out on the last, you know, 15, 20 games, whatever was left. I can't remember now what was left to play, but you know, you're gonna miss out on those. You know, wait till next year. It's it's hard, right? You know, everyone everyone would obviously in a perfect scenario. Now this would obviously happen. We would already be in the playoffs. We'd be watching playoff hockey. Tyra would be crying because the Leafs would already be out, you know, in four you know, games or five games. I didn't even get to see Austin Matthews score 50. He was some close. I think he was at 48. Uh, well, that's how we started and, this podcast, uh, right? We were talking. God damn it. I was so excited, like, to see him and Pasternak and uh, Ovi just battle it out. You know, three guys that are just lighting the lamp and having crazy years. And uh, it's super disappointing. You know, this is a season he won't get back. And he's not at 50 right now. So if you don't play any regular season games, you know, that's that's where she's at, which They're is gone. disappointing. But it is what it is. I, I can live not see him score 50 this year as long as we get the product back and there is some sort of playoff or, you know what I mean, and the cup's handed out. Yeah, it's kind of shitty because some teams, uh, well, we're rolling going into the playoffs, about to hit the playoffs, and that's where you want to be. Um, so what it is what it is, though. As long as they hand the trophy out, I can. I feel I can hope, anyways, it happens. So we'll see. Well, a lot, a lot of these teams I'm too. They, a lot of them got healthy, right? Like Colorado was a dumpster exactly. fire when it came to injuries, right? We had you know, Nathan McKinnon just got injured. Rantanen was injured. Kadri was injured. Yeah, you go through the list. We had a lot of big name guys out, and you know, all the, I think pretty much all of them are recovered now, and 
are back to normal and, and good to go and could play whenever you know games start up so that helps people too like i said you just want to see the games played you know and... well that doesn't help my fantasy eric i was no. laughing because there's certain players got hurt and it was looking like i was gonna sneak by the guy i was playing play the probably the, the, the best team dominant team in our league and he had some key injuries and i was thinking oh maybe i sneak through here you know my chances are better and what happens COVID-19 happens. It just totally screws my whole Italy oodly up. So what do we do? Do we, do we, uh, if fantasy hockey doesn't happen, what do we do with the trophy? Eric? Do we put uh, COVID-19? God, no. Do we put <laughs> NA? Not applicable? That's horrible. That's horse shit. So, yeah. uh, you know, I don't know I think, what we're going to do there. I don't know what we're going to do. I think, we're, I think it's just done. I think it's, we're going to probably take all the money, pull it up and just throw a couple extra bucks in for next it'll year, be, maybe. It'll be next year. Which is God good for me because... Because I was having a terrible year, so that, <laughs> that sounds great to me. You weren't the worst, though, but you suck. No, I was not great. I you also forgot worst, to set my lineup. I'm, I'm so bad. Like I'm on. Like who fantasy forgets football. to set their lineup? Like come on. F- fantasy football, I'm on. Like I'm on, pretty excuses, much on point for all of it. Excuses. Hockey, I just and I'm, it's because I'm in a couple different leagues and I'm, they're they're set up differently. One of them, like our our old work league, that we're still in, that I'm still in. The issue there is. <laughs> People are going to love this. Attention. This is fancy. But it, it's it's a daily fantasy setup. So every day you set it. So I'm in another hockey league with some friends. I love it. And it's a weekly setup. So you just set your lineup for the week. And if your guy plays, you know, obviously that becomes more of a, if this it's guy's horrible. playing four games, this game, guy's week. playing two games, you just set it and it's done. And so I always forget about the, the old work league, <laughs> what I'm doing with that one. And that's just, that's just the way it happens, unfortunately. It's just not good. At the end of it, I was getting really good, and then I missed out on the playoffs by like. That is the only two. league hockey and in, in, uh, anyways, in fantasy is the only league I haven't won in yet. And boy, I thought I was going to surprise some teams this year, but shit happens. Um, but I'm really I'm interested you- about baseball because I won. I went to the shit the last two years in baseball. One last year, the men of champ bitches, and uh, I was really looking forward to it. <laughs> and uh, it, we don't know what's going to go on here. Like, hopefully, baseball comes back too. So we'll yeah, see. No, it's- and I think that's why, like I said, we're we're going to get into this. A lot of people think that we started a podcast just because of COVID-19 and we had nothing else to do. And I'm like, no, no. Yeah. We actually started this like a couple weeks before. And um, we had, uh, we thought about, we talked about it, like shot the shit about it for months, previous months. So, yeah, just for you people that, you know, think that shit. You're wrong. Yes, no, you like I said, we, we, we've always talked about doing a podcast. And then I said, oh, do you want to take the, want to bite the bullet? Want to do it? And Tara's like, you know what? Screw it. Let's do it. So we got everything. And I got, obviously, it's a little different right now with, with this. We're doing it through Zoom so I can just record through the computer. But I, you know, I went and got like a portable recorder, which is good for the sound and everything else to record all the, record everything. We you know, invested. I got, I got, I got mics. Um, I got everything kind of set up. And then this happens. And now Trevor's. You know, if you ever notice why my voice sounds a little better and you haven't watched the YouTube videos, it's because I'm recording with an actual mic and Trevor's just recording through his headset because he's using his True tablet story. and he doesn't actually have like a USB port or nothing. So it's uh it's a no guy. technology. That's a no guy. So it's like I said, it's fun. It's it is what it is. We we really enjoy this. You know, like we had different plans. We were kind of snowballing, what do we do? Do you do we eventually just do one episode? a week for football and one episode a week for hockey and we'll kind of spitball with other stuff throughout those episodes if something big happens in basketball or something big happens in baseball or you know whatever and then like i said this all happened and we've kind of just been grasping at straws whether it's talking about schedules talking about some ufc which i don't think we ever thought we'd talk about ufc but i loved it though um you know and like i said we've talked about a little bit of everything talked about lacrosse i love lacrosse if you want, Trevor, we can do a draft breakdown on the PLL draft on Wednesday. Leave How me out of that sound? episode, Haas. Huh? You're good. Should I get a should I should I'm I get a, a guest host for that one? There you go. We'll shake, we'll bake. Yeah, I'm. It, it is what it is. I but it, like I said, we're we're enjoying this. Like I said, hopefully you guys are too. If you have any suggestions on like stuff you really want to hear about, like I said, if you want to hear, hey, I want to hear you talk about. The 
Edmonton Oilers, maybe. You know, you know, we have a guy I know, Adam. He listens to it. And he's an Oilers fan. Maybe he wants to hear about the Oilers. If you want to hear about the Phoenix Coyotes, great. If you want to hear about the Buffalo Bills, if you want, like, it doesn't matter. Whatever you guys think you want to hear about, send a suggestion over. We're obviously looking to fill little spot, spots and talk about everything. And it's just enjoyable. As we get closer to football, I think we're going to probably break down – you know, each division and where we think they kind of finish off, you know, obviously I already said, we think Kansas city is going to be the top in the AFC West. Whoa, 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 whoa. Do you think that I like both? I think that no AFC West, not the AFC in total AFC West. Okay. So just like the chargers, okay. the Broncos, the Raiders and the chiefs, but yeah. So, you know, what, but what, in what order do they, do they finish? Right. Um, but yeah, so I said, anybody has any questions, let us know. And if you haven't yet, go hit like, rate us, review us, subscribe, wherever you are. All that there's fun some, stuff, come on. There's iTunes, there's Apple Podcasts, there's Spotify, there's YouTube, there's Instagram. Gonna try to do a couple things with Instagram. I am back to work Sweet. now, so I actually have to work once in a while, which is kind of different. That's That was one nice thing through all this is I could edit videos and stuff and stay up till late hours of the night. Trevor doesn't understand that because Trevor doesn't do any of the editing part of it. We right. try, we hang up from this and Trevor goes and says, okay, see you later, guy. Bye. And then I have Good the Good chance I'm like, going to Wendy's after this episode. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and the next, for the next three hours, I'm out here doing editing to try to make it sound good. Baconator sounds just delicious, doesn't it? Do you want to drop one off Baconator. at my house on the way back? Social you distancing. Oh, you can swing by. You can just leave it on the, on the doorstep. <laughs> You'd but like that, wouldn't you? Mm-hmm. I would. Mm-hmm. That sounds really good. <laughs> but yeah, delicious. so it does. Meet you there in five. <laughs> yeah, meet, pff, your, your truck can't keep up. No, it wouldn't be my truck. It'd be the old car. Oh, the old car. So there you go. So, anyways, yeah. uh, we were kind of just rambling on here. I think we're like right on an hour and a half again. So that's pretty. So Perfect. Bad. We're we're doing pretty good at this whole time limit thing, Trevor. Somewhat, somewhat doing pretty good with this. Trying to keep it under those two hours that we that we, we rambled on for a couple episodes. It's all right. I like it when yeah. we ramble. We're passionate. Get over it, people. We are. We love our Patriots. We love our Chargers. They like said we're gonna get into other teams too. But they like said with that with the schedule release, we could we could have brought broke down all thirty two te- teams and uh, and their schedules and where what we thought their record was gonna be. But we didn't want you being here for the next seven hours. Yeesh, so. I don't know. I it's it's, know, it's when you do that though, and then you got to go back and be like, "Did I have the Chargers losing to that team?" And you got to try to figure out who actually finishes with the same amount of wins. That's a, that's a funny thing whenever you do the win loss, you know, predictions at the end of the year. So, you know, anybody wondering, like I said, send us a message if you have any suggestions, and we'll go from there. Thank you all for listening. Trevor's actually going to say his outro this time because every time for the last like. Four Thanks weeks. for listening, guys. Uh, yeah. This is Ward, just, uh, just cock it out. You guys just have a lovely evening, or if you're listening during the day, have a lovely day. And uh, yeah, Steve Ward. Talk to you later. <laughs> Peace out. Bam. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys, for listening. Have a good night. Bye.